Hey guys, happy Wednesday. It is hump day. We're halfway through this week because it's a short week. Um, I guess if you had a holiday on Monday, weeks feel weird to me. It feels like every day is a work day, but that's always been the case. Um, so I don't know what life's like for you guys, but it is Wednesday. Maybe you're feeling rushed in your four hour day or four hour week. Maybe you're feeling typical. Who knows what's up? But we do have a question for you today, which is what are you looking forward to doing today? So share with us what you're gonna get after. Um, the weather's been nice. It keeps saying it's gonna rain and then it doesn't, which I can't complain about. Um, it does make it harder to feel like you should be productive. You're like, oh, I wanna go on a walk. Um, make sure you get out, enjoy those while we still can. Um, obviously you can enjoy those once you're back into the workflow as well, but if you've had a little bit more freedom or flexibility in your schedule, maybe you're looking forward to getting on a walk today. Um, maybe it's, you know, playing with the kids outside. Maybe it's jumping in on class. Um, just let us know what you're looking forward to doing today. Maybe it's dropping by the gym with your equipment. You're like, I can't wait to see the space. It's still under construction, but I still can't wait to see it. Um, not much has changed there. It's been 70 plus days and just chilling with the space. Took a long time for them to dig it out and it's taken a couple weeks for them to decide that they can find somebody to pour the cement. I'm not gonna complain because they're working on it during these crazy times. Um, so I guess what I'm looking forward to for my Wednesday, I'm looking forward to seeing some people, but I'm most looking forward um, to getting some stuff ready for you guys. So looking forward to working. I know that's weird, but it's an exciting time right now. Transitional phase, it's a good time. Um, with that being said, if you were able to watch um, the town hall meeting, awesome. Just kind of clarified again, some of those guidelines, um, things to expect. And then all of that will come out in written form as well. Um, but I know some people like to just listen to the plan um, and not have to read a ton. So if you're a listener, go ahead and listen to that. It also answers some questions that I will not be addressing additionally. Um, if there are questions that you have as well, um, you can ask them again. But if you listen to it and you're like, oh yeah, I was curious on that, um, that's great. But some, sometimes they're not really worth I mean, not sometimes, a lot of them aren't worth putting into a standard operating procedure or anything. They're just like questions that people have had, um, you know, in passing or that they put in the survey. So we just touched on them. Um, go ahead and listen to that. I kind of break down those big key things. Um, I also just sent an email to you guys last night that had, well, you'll get this a little bit after I just sent it. Um, and it has some typical guidelines, um, things like waiting to come in, wearing a mask when you come and go, um, wiping down your equipment, limited people in the shower room when they're showering and changing, no leaving stuff in the locker rooms or shower rooms, um, keep stuff in your car, bring just your water bottle into the gym, all those fun things. If you're working from home, please, um, be considerate of the fact that you can get ready at home and then come to the gym um, so that we don't have people trying to come from work to get dressed and people coming from home to get dressed. Um, if you have that access to get dressed at home, do so please. Um, lots of different things in there, but take a look at it. If you still have questions, send them in an email. Um, if they've been addressed, I'll probably just send you the link to the video. If they haven't been addressed, I will do the best I can to address them. Um, I will be honest, I am not the expert. I will continue to say this. I am not the expert on coronavirus. I am simply following the CDC guidelines, following the DHS guidelines and sharing those with you guys. So if you're questioning anything, go to the CDC or go to the DHS um, Department of Health Services and see what they're recommending. You can check out the WHO as well, see what's going on. Okay, remember that all I'm doing is sharing and educating the information um, that is out there from the experts. I am not the expert. My cat's tail is whipping around at you guys. All right, you can fast forward through all that if you didn't already. Um, today, we're gonna get warmed up, get those shoulders ready. Even though we did some shoulder work yesterday, um, we're gonna hit some upper body pump. Since we did a little bit more gymnastic skills, upper body work yesterday, we're gonna get some 
pump work done today, pump work is what I like to call it, um, but nice and controlled upper body work. And then we're gonna get after workout, push pop. So push pops is going to be four time, 21, 15, nine, 15, nine, 21. Um, nice and confusing there with the rep scheme. I might have 59, 59, I think it's supposed to be 21. We're going to stick with that. Sorry. I'm, I'm reading it and questioning it, but there it is. 21, 15, 9, 15, 9, 21. Um, we're going to do burpees and bent over rows. If you have a pull-up bar and the capacity, you can do pull-ups instead of bent over rows. What I mean by the capacity is the physical capability of doing that many reps of pull-ups. Be realistic, if we haven't been doing pull-ups, maybe just scale to those bent over rows or maybe just scale all those pull-ups to be like one third of the amount. So like seven, um, five, and three respectively. So getting in some pull-ups, but scale back that rep scheme. Um, yeah, those are fun things to think about. For our warm up, we've just got 20 seconds of um, different movements here. So we've got 20 seconds of mountain climbers. So we've got one, two, six minute warm up here. We'll go mountain climbers to start. So in that beautiful plank position here, bring those knees in, 20 seconds of mountain climbers. Then we'll go into 20 seconds, plank toe taps. After 20 seconds there, we're gonna go ahead, bring the knees down, right side and thread the needle open. After 20 seconds there, left side and thread the needle open, getting that upper back loosened, especially after those uh, clean and jerks today. And we've got push up to down dog for 20 seconds. Again, you can always scale that to a knee push up. Drive some foot back. And then we will get in 20 seconds of dead bugs, which is you're hanging out, legs stuck between the two. So the legs up, one leg, sorry, opposite arm, the same arm, same leg, move away, from each other. Kind of like those VFs from yesterday's workout, but not really. Nice and controlled. We've got three total rounds of those movements, six minutes, getting you guys good and warm. Once we're through that, we're gonna go five push press on the right, five push press on the left um, with a three count negative. Again, if you have two dumbbells or a barbell or anything like that, do five reps total, both arms working at the same time. If you have one object and it's lighter, go five reps right five reps left. If you have one object heavier, hold it across the two and go five reps, both arms. So as long as you think about it as both arms need to get in five reps, whether they're done together or right arm, left arm needs to be five reps each arm, okay? Then we have 10 curls um, with a three count negative, same exact thought here. So either 10 curls together, 10 right, 10 left, or holding one object, 10 curls together. And we have 20 um, piked shoulder taps. So going with those five, push press with a three count negative. I'll show you what that means first. So remember with that push press that we have that two inch dip to help get that dumbbell up overhead. So we did all those jerks yesterday. Two inch dip, drive it up, you're gonna go one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, and that's one. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. That's two. I'll show up from the front. Push press, lock it out. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, three. So you'll do five reps on the right and then five on the left, really controlling that dumbbell coming back down into that beautiful front front position. You can go again with that one heavier dumbbell in front. So you're going to dip, drive. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. Still nice and controlled on the way back down. Awesome. So five reps total there. And again, if you have a barbell, same exact thing. 
dressing it up, one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, controlling into that front rack position. After those, we've got the curl. So I don't have two objects, but if you had two, we're still going to go three count lowering. So again, always with that curl, you want to think about your elbow being connected to your rib cage and pulling those biceps nice and tight to the body. You're going to go ahead and lift, and then one thousand, two one thousand. 3,000 to straight, lift, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 to straight, doing that for 10 total reps. If you want to do that with two objects, great. If you want to do it with one object across the two arms, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Again, keeping those biceps activated, ribs in, or elbows in the ribs. That's an option. Or you can go single arm. 10 on the right, 10 on the left. Still notice that I'm keeping that elbow nice and close. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000 down. Awesome. Definitely going to feel that. Um, do not need to rush through those. They're meant to be up and then nice and controlled. We need to break them up into two sets of five. Do so. Then we have that piped toe tap, or sorry, shoulder tap. Um, same arm, same shoulder. May have worked on this to, um, yesterday, depending on what you scale your arm raises to. But head looking through the knees, same shoulder, same hand. And then the scale for this would be to be in your plank position, opposite hand to opposite shoulder for those 20 taps. So you're going to go 20 here or 20 here. And it's 20 total, not 20 each arm. Awesome. Getting through that for three to five rounds. Um, no more than like 20 minutes there. Um, 15 to 20 minutes is plenty. For our workout today, we've got push pops. Nice and confusing with the reps here again. 21, 15, 9, 15, 9, 21. So starting with burpees, we all know what a burpee is, but for the heck of it, I'll show you a couple. Just because I know you guys love to see them laying down, peeling, popping up. We can scale that to that new favorite movement for your guys' form up called a sprawl, jumping straight back up and making sure we jump off the ground. That's a scale option. We can also still get that full burpee in, but maybe we lay down and then we lift one leg to the other, jump up, or maybe we step back, step back, lay down. Step up, step up, clap. So a couple different options there for that burpee. Um, then we have bent over rows. Again, unless you have a pull-up bar, we're doing bent over rows. Same exact um, thing here. We can go one, two, or one object across. So if I have a single object, like a dumbbell or my kettlebell, I'm going to get those bent over rows done with one object. I've shown this before. You want to think about your deadlift setup. So hips go back, chest stays up, about to the mid shin. Maybe you're thinking about your clean position. That's position two of your clean. Um, this is where you're going to start that movement. And then you're going to think about driving that elbow to the ceiling, pulling that hand to the rib cage. That's going to be your bent over row. You can do that with both hands. Say you have like a couple of weights that you can do both arms at the same time. You're going to go 21 here. That would be the ideal. If you have a barbell, go palms facing the wall and go 21 reps there. Still making sure you're driving those elbows back. So a lot of times I see people do this. Think about pulling the shoulders down and back, driving that into the rib cage. If you have um, two dumbbells, again, like I said, you're gonna turn those um, dumbbell heads out and pull to the rib cage here. And then if you just have one, you want to make sure that once you lift it up, you still re-square everything. So you're not bent over like this. Re-square it all up and pull to that rib cage. Driving the elbow back. It stays nice and close to the body, right? Not sending the elbow out to the wall. So if you're doing your reps with one object on one side and the other, make sure you break it up. So for that 20 reps, maybe do 11, then 10. Um, it's not 21 each arm and then 15 each arm. So it's 21 total between the two arms, unless you're doing both arms together, then it's 21 here. 
You can also do that with one object, right? So chest stays nice and high, pull through. That's an option as well. Notice that I'm using my upper body and not like standing my legs up to help keep that weight up. Keep that core active, drive those elbows back, rest as needed. Push props is meant to be a challenging workout. We've got 21 burpees, 21 bent over rows, 15 burpees, 15 bent over rows, nine, nine, 15, 15, nine, nine, finishing with 21 and 21. Let us know how it goes. Have some fun.